Carolina's Field, Forest, and Water, a closer look at agriculture in South Carolina and conversations between the current and future leaders of agriculture in the Palmetto State and experts from across America. Presented by the students of the South Carolina Governor's School for Agriculture at John De La Howe. From our campus in McCormick County, here's our moderator, Lyle Fulmer. Welcome into this edition of Carolina's Field, Forest, and Water. I'm your host, Lyle Fulmer, and next week, September 17th through the 23rd, is National Farm Safety and Health Week. It is a week designed to promote a wide range of farm safety and health topics. And today we are joined by Mr. Dan Neenan, Director of the National Education Center for Agricultural Safety, and Professor Hunter Massey from Clemson University, who focuses on farm safety issues here in the Palmetto State. Here today, we're also joined by Mr. Eric McCall, who is the farm manager here at the school, and Mr. Russ Abrams, who is the school's agricultural mechanics teacher. And I'd like to thank all of our guests here today for joining us. And just kind of to start us off, I would like to talk to Mr. Neenan kind of about what a little bit of the history of the NECAS and what they really represent. Okay. So NECAS is the National Education Center for Agricultural Safety. We're located in Piasta, Iowa. Uh, so if you notice the accent, well, actually the accent's yours. I talk normally, uh, you know, to be able to do that. Uh, but uh, Farm Safety and Health Week is one of the longest presidential proclamation theme weeks in the nation. Actually, FDR signed the first one back in 1944. Uh, so at NECAS, we serve three core audience groups. We do safety and health programming for farmers and ranchers. Uh, safety and health programming for agribusiness, and we do agricultural rescue programming for rural volunteer fire departments. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. And I would kind of like to talk to both Mr. Neenan and Mr. Massey about kind of what y'all think the importance of this whole ag safety and kind of how we need to both keep farmers safe, but we also need to kind of go into once the accident does happen, because nobody's exactly not accident prone, <laughs> kind of how we have to go into, even if the accident does happen, make sure there's still resources out there for farmers to continue farming. And I know that Clemson University now has a partnership with AgriAbility and Able SC so that now we can have those initiatives and innovations in the Palmetto State. So kind of, can we talk to both Mr. Hunter Massey about kind of what the AgriAbility initiative is going to do for South Carolina? Yeah, so obviously safety is, you know, the number one thing. And if we can prevent something, uh, that's, that's our goal. Uh, but like you said, once something happens, which unfortunately I believe inevitably will, um, we're hoping we can step in. This is a relatively new program. Uh, we can step in uh, and the process there where they can conduct a site visit and basically see what we can provide for assistance and help to that grower so they keep going. Um, I, we actually are on track for our very first uh, site visit and client next meeting next week. So we're excited about that. And we're here as a resource to basically aid and advise. And then Able SC steps in to hopefully provide a little bit more on the resource side. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Eric McCall, can you kind of give us your background and kind of the work experience that you see and just kind of some of the dangers that farming can have on an industry? Yeah, certainly. So my background is in business. Uh, I own two small businesses um, for the last 20 years. Uh, one of them was construction based and one of them was uh, kind of a custom farming and habitat modification uh, was kind of what we did there. And so uh, I think you've got a you know, very valid point here. The safety it always has to be up front, you know, foremost in your mind because you know, things can happen at the drop of a hat. So on the construction side, I've seen a lot of things. Then on the farm side, especially, you know, as it applies to agriculture, um, I think it's a, it's an ever-present thing to, to have in your mind. You know, you need to be thinking safety first all the time. And to uh, Mr. Massey's point, you know, uh, prevention, I think, is, is key uh, and awareness. Um, a lot of times with my interactions here with the students, you know, one of the things I try to talk about a lot is, you know, you need to respect the machinery that you're working with, respect the livestock that you're working with, and understand the dangers, but awareness is, is definitely a, a major topic. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
And Mr. Abrams, since you are a high school agricultural teacher, how many years do you have being an agricultural teacher? Uh, this is my 16th year teaching uh, ag mechanics. That's quite a stretch, isn't it? <laughs> 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 yes, sir. But kind of, can you talk to us about, as far as the high school level goes, how what the kind of courses and the things that you go through to make sure that the kids are safe, not only during your class, whenever they have that hour and a half or two hour period where we're working on equipment or working with equipment. What are some of the things and the important things that you kind of go through to make sure that they're safe? Uh, with every course, we're going to start off doing just basic safety. Uh, a lot of shop safety, a lot of farm equipment safety. Um, then as we learn new subject matters, electrical, uh, welding, uh, plumbing, we're going to look at those safety aspects in each of those uh, types of uh, courses. And then uh, with the farm equipment, with the equipment ops, uh, we take equipment operation here. Um, I mean, we have a, a wide range of equipment. A lot of it's older stuff that um, uh, we have to look at every little part of that tractor piece of equipment because there's a lot of things that has been improved over the years. And, uh, you know, there's things that you could get injured more easily in the older equipment. Um, so the kids need to know where to be when the equipment's running, where not to be. Um, you know, we got a lockout tag out for, you know, even the equipment when, when something's broke, you can't run out there and grab it and get on it. Um, you know, that's key is uh, um, a lot of times is just keeping the, making sure the kids understand all the danger points of that equipment because the PTO shafts and um, uh, chains and, and sprockets and all that stuff, you know, they don't, um, they don't, they're not real, when something goes bad, it's going to go bad really quickly. So uh, we just try to prevent those accidents and, and then keep that stuff up to date on a uh, safety type equipment. Yes, sir. Most definitely. I mean, I myself, I did grow up on a farm and I'm sure most everybody here probably grew up on a farm too, or at least was in a work environment at some point in y'all's career. And I mean, yes, most people typically learn whenever they grow up on a farm or in a work environment, they learn those safety habits that those basic safety habits that you need to learn whenever you're working. And for those students that probably weren't in a work environment growing up and they're just finally getting into it. And I mean, as far as FFA and 4-H goes, we constantly advocate for other people to come in, even if they don't have that background. And I think it's that's one of those mainly important things that we make sure to teach them that they're safe to start off with before we ever actually do any work like row cropping or working on equipment and things like that. And Mr. Neenan, I would kind of like to touch on kind of what the job opportunities and kind of the things that y'all go into whenever you're teaching your students kind of the ag safety. Sure. You know, agriculture has been the most dangerous industry in the United States for several years running. Um, I first started here at NECAS back in the year 2000, and we were averaging 730 fatalities at that point. Um, you know, we've gotten better than that. Uh, 2021 was last year we have data for. Um, we had 453 fatalities. So we're going in the right direction, but we're never going to reach zero during my working lifetime. You know, the other thing is, is it's estimated there's another 50,000 disabling injuries. Um, you know, so uh, whenever I start a presentation, I always ask folks, you know, who knows a farmer? Who knows a farmer that's missing some fingers? Who knows a farmer that's hard of hearing, not just a selective hearing his spouse thinks that he has, but real hearing loss, or an older farmer who's now on oxygen. These are things that have always kind of been a rite of passage, but they don't have to be, okay? Um, we've got the personal protective equipment to help with the hearing. We've got the safety equipment, you know, but the, the biggest enemy per se is farmers are in a hurry. Um, you know, a farmer doesn't wake up in the fall you know, and think, you know, I've got 150 things to do today if everything goes right. Well, we all know everything's not going to go right, you know. So it's taking that time that if a belt breaks, you take the safety shield off, you replace that belt, but you take the time to put the safety shield on. Because if something goes wrong again, and that safety shield's not there, that's where these incidents can take place. So it's critical as we get into the fall harvest season in different parts of the country, to take a look, do I have a stocked first aid kit? 
Um, up in our neck of the woods, it's dry here. I mean, it's really dry. We're going to have some field fires and we're definitely going to have combine fires. So do I have a fire extinguisher in the farm shop? And if I'm running a combine, I should have two, one up in the operator station and one down and around the other side. Big misnomer that people have with the fire extinguishers is that if I've got a 10 pound extinguisher and I put out a small fire and use a pound, I can just hang that fire extinguisher back up and use it again. Well, that's not true. There's a nitrogen propellant in there. And if you use it, just if you puff it and you put a fire out, that nitrogen's gone. So even though you have nine pounds of powder in there, you've got no propellant to get it out. So it needs to be recharged, um, you know, so it's set and ready to go again. So, you know, the old uh, adage of, you know, a pound of uh, prevention is, is worth an ounce of cure, you know, to, to be able to do that is important. Yes, sir. And is your organization just like a regular college that anybody can go to? Or is it one of those things that someone after college may go to to get, get a degree from? Yep. We are located at a community college. Uh, but everything that we do on the, the safety side of it is more of the continuing education side of it. Uh, we have dabbled in the credit side uh, on the fire science degree, and we also created a viticulture and analogy credit safety program. But I would say 99% of what we do is continuing ed for folks that are out in the industry. Okay. Yes, sir. And Hunter Massey, I know that you and Clemson University, they kind of do a little bit of ag safety. And for some people here in the Palmetto State, can you not kind of describe kind of the things that y'all go through at Clemson University whenever you're doing ag safety as far yeah. as learning education goes? Yeah, so um, it, it's a relatively new program here at Clemson. It actually existed a number of years ago, about 20 years ago. We had ag um, farm safety is what we called it at the time. Uh, but in 2019, we recreated uh, agricultural safety, which is a little broader group uh, that we're trying to look at. Uh, the initial goal of the project was directed towards youth. So 14 to 18 was the target. And it's since grown beyond that. But the topics we cover, we do field days, meetings, um, you know, school farm shows, basically get into the high schools and to your high school FFA and Ag Ed programs, and we we basically go over a, a number of topics, and they tend to vary depending on what region we are in our state. Because as uh, you know, I'm sure most of y'all are aware, South Carolina is very diverse uh, in terms of our agriculture. So you know, all where we're at in the ups, very much cattle, and then you move, you trend forestry to row crop to more vegetables as you get closer to the coast. Uh, so our topics kind of change, but the same premise. Is, stays the same for most of them. So we cover tractor and equipment safety, lawn, ATV, UTV, roadway, uh, what we call safe load, which is load securement, um, pesticide, power tools, general PPE. Um, we grain bin safety, which I'll hit on in just a second. Um, and anything kind of specialty. Some we have more animal. Um, so in the upstate, we always include animal safety. Uh, but generally in a low street, we try to spend a little more time with the row crop and equipment because that's generally more related to them. And then here in the last two years, we've really upped our our work in more adult ed and safety. So we're, we our big ticket right now is we have a grain entrapment simulator that is traveling across the state. Uh, again, goal there is prevention uh, in, in education of how fast you can go down in grain, moving grain and what can happen. Uh, but the secondary thing that kind of came out of this is we realized very quickly that uh, our rescue squads are untrained. So if a call comes and someone's entrapped in grain, uh, they don't have the knowledge um, because they've, they've never dealt with it um, to go in and actually perform a rescue. Uh, so I believe since February, we have done almost 20 trainings with rescue squads across the state. Uh, and have about that many more scheduled till the first of the year uh, where we're getting out and we do a little seminar. We actually go in and actually rescue a victim. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of everything um, and, and hopefully we can make a little bit of difference as well. Yes, sir. And kind of to bounce back off of that, have you ever 
been in a situation where you have taught somebody these things like ag safety and you have seen where it's actually benefited somebody else like potentially they came to your class they took your course and then they went on to do something related to ag safety and then they possibly saved someone's life you know it's hard to say um and so i've definitely seen people benefit i've seen my students change the way they're doing things and I've seen them get ready to do something and they'll real quickly say this isn't very safe for me and they'll stop uh, but in terms of do you know if you save someone's life if you truly did a good job in preparing them and change the way they're thinking about what they're doing and their task or, or at hand and and just like the point before um, aware of what's going on slow down not be in a hurry. That's a lot of what this stuff is. Uh, but if you truly change that and help someone with that, they're never in a spot to where it actually, they're going to be endangered. Um, and so it's hard to say, honestly, if you say, save someone's life there. Um, you know, I hope so. Uh, and I, I can definitely tell you, I've seen my students and people come to me and say, hey, I do things a little different now. And hey, maybe that did. Um, but it's hard to say for sure because, again, if you train them properly, they're never in the slot to have that near miss that you don't want them to have. Yes, sir. And I would kind of like to touch on kind of how ag safety has changed through the years. And Mr. McCall and Mr. Abrams, not to kind of point anything out, but y'all y'all are kind of senior members. So <laughs> can you kind of, Mr. McCall, tell me how – you have seen and kind of grown up and seen how ag safety has changed from both being as a young child to where you are now? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, uh, I can think of several incidences of uh, men and women who've been injured on the farm that stick out in my mind, even from when I was young. Uh, one of them involved a silo, grain bin. Uh, some folks I know that's been uh, hurt pretty bad working with livestock. And I think if I could sum it up um, through the years, I have seen awareness increase, you know, and it it has become more and more a talking point, which I think is good because anytime you can get the conversation moving about a subject uh, and increase awareness, you know, it, you're establishing that thought pattern. And uh, I think that applies also uh, to us as teachers is that, you mentioned a while ago there may be kids that come here that are not from an agricultural background, which gives us an edge. We can help them establish that thought process early on. Um, a lot of times I think it's, uh, you know, if, if someone has grown up in agriculture and maybe they've learned a particular way or a method and you as an instructor or, or a supervisor realize that they're putting themselves in an unsafe situation, that's sometimes a little more difficult to manage, you know, to try to point that out and say, hey, uh, think about this. You know, you really need to to look at the situation you're putting yourself in or perhaps you're putting others in. And uh, but I guess uh, to your question, I, I have seen a safety awareness increase in my mind a lot through the years. Yes, sir. Mr. Abrams, do you have any comments on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing I have to deal with is that ain't, that's not the way granddaddy did it. That's not the way daddy did it. Uh, we take those shields off when we get a new piece of equipment. They're getting in our way. So, I mean, the every day, you know, uh, we get, we, we have, you know, kids from very diverse backgrounds, but, um, you know, it's, and even me, I mean, I grew up with, you know, uh, not, you know, not the, not unsafe, but, you know, tricycle tractors, stuff like that, that, uh, you know, grandfather put you on there and went and you, uh, and, you know, nothing ever happened, luckily. But uh, now that I look back, I'm going, this is very dangerous what we did there. We were, you know, we were, you know, the, the front tire shouldn't leave the ground. You know, it's like a situation like that. So you're like, um, yes, so let's learn from this. And then I can, uh, I think my students enjoy my stories from, you know, what I've learned over the years and apply it to like, you know, if you, you know, this keeps you from losing a limb, an eye, um, you know, you, you don't want to go deaf, um, type thing when you can prevent all these things. So let's, let's, let's look at the safety aspect of it. And, uh, you know, and I always tell them, you know, you know, you might not look good with, you know, a scar across your face, but you know, um, they don't always, uh, listen. 
but uh, they're getting better. And all the equipment now, everything that we run, the newer stuff, there's 50 different little safety uh, buttons and things on there that try to prevent a lot of this stuff. I mean, you got to have the tractor, you know, the in park. You got to have uh, uh, your seat belt almost on. You got to be in the seat. You get up on the seat, it cuts off. So, I mean, thanks to the manufacturers, uh, um, they help prevent a lot of accidents with, with their engineering. Yes, sir. And even I, myself, I have grown up with someone, his his name's Jody Ham, and he has been handicapped since he was 18, and he's about 60 years old now. So for about majority of his life, he has been in a wheelchair, and he his farming accident was whenever he was changing a wheel on a gravity wagon. And he was sitting crisscross applesauce on the ground, and the jack came out from under the gravity wagon, and it the axle caught him right across the neck and he was paralyzed from the waist down and he still continued to farm. But I mean, that was 40, 50 years ago. And back then, I mean, especially back then the whole farm safety and farmers continuing to farm, even after they were injured, that wasn't very prevalent, or at least as far as I know, it wasn't very prevalent. So he had to kind of make his way and kind of, rig up tractors so that he was able to continue farming and other pieces of equipment. And for me, at least, I, for me to see him struggle at my age, it just, it's something that I can't stand to see. So I have kind of started to be involved in this industry of kind of making equipment to where either it's safer, maybe we can do it in a safer practice or create an innovation that would make people like Mr. Jody continue to farm with little to no struggle whatsoever. So anyhow, and Mr. Neenan, I would kind of like to ask you again of kind of what are some of the things that you have seen in your line of industry that someone has potentially changed, changed a piece of equipment or come up with a new practice over the years that would have made it simpler for someone, even in a wheelchair, to make it safer for them to continue farming? Yep. Well, going on what... Uh you know, uh, Mr. Massey had said, um, it's hard to count an incident that didn't happen. Um, but when you're teaching firefighters, you know, it's, it's another thing. Uh, so we've now trained 35 fire departments that have rescued somebody out of a bin. Uh, so we've got two mobile trailers. So if you're familiar with Grain Bin Safety Week, um, you know, folks can go on to grainbinsafetyweek.com after January 1st and nominate their fire department to win a rescue tube. And then we'll come and provide the rescue tube and do the training for them. And we've been down in South Carolina and delivered a couple of tubes down there a couple of years ago. So we'd love to be able to come back. Uh, you guys are very nice to, to be around, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, very nice folks to work with to make that happen. So, I mean, you have to take a look at it. And, you know, I know that we just talked about engineering and engineering has helped a lot of folks. But what's the one thing we can't engineer against? It, an, an accident that potentially may or may not happen? Human error. Well, yeah. it's somebody, error. Disabling, somebody disabling the safety feature that was put onto the yes. tractor to keep them from getting injured. You know, so we need to take a look at you know, those safeties were put there for a reason. And it's not like the days of the first PTO Master Shields that came on that were in the way and folks took them out because it was impossible to work around them. You know, the, the PTO Safety Shields today, you know, just fold out of your way. You can attach it and you can put the PTO Safety Shield down. So it's providing that for you. So it's it's getting folks to have that understanding. And Farm Safety and Health Week gives us that one week where the media is going to get behind and talk about things. We want the farmers to be thinking about that 52 weeks a year, uh, in all honesty, to make that happen. But as we get into the fall harvest season, the days are getting shorter. Um, you know, it's sorry to say that, but they are. And that's the time of night that the farm equipment's going to be out on the roadway. So for the farmers to take that realization to check their lighting and their marking and make sure that, you know, it's up to snuff and they're visible, and for the motoring public to realize that farm equipment's only doing 20 to 25 miles per hour. So when you see that slow moving vehicle sign, you know, get your foot off the gas, put your foot on the brake. It is illegal to pass a piece of farm equipment in a no passing zone, okay? Even if it is a passing zone, always be taking a look when you go to pass 
if there is a farmstead driveway off to your left, because that tractor may be turning in uh, to that driveway. And nobody wins that incident. The farm equipment's heavier and will probably cause more damage on the public. But, you know, if you've got one combine and that gets totaled and taken out the first week of harvest, you know, the farmer's got a, a painful injury that, you know, they don't have that equipment to be able to work through. So, you know, Farm Safety and Health Week, if you live in a rural area, it affects you uh, and to take a look and work with that. So we do have a series of webinars that run next week. Uh, I believe that it's 11, noon, and one o'clock uh, Central Standard Time uh, on a variety of topics. They're all free. You can just log on and be able to take that. Yes, sir. And with your experience in the ag safety, as far as education goes, are we from compared to the past to now and compared to what we're going to do in the future, are we just teaching them to, you know, just the standard stay safe on the road and then just the standards of just standard safety? Or are we doing more things? Are we teaching them kind of about the new policies and kind of encouraging them to create new innovations or anything of that nature? Yeah, you know, we've talked a lot about grain bins and, you know, there's some things coming on the market after market that will help prevent folks from getting into the bin. Um, you know, there's the sump saver out there, which mounts on top of your sump and it runs a hydraulic line out the side of the bin. Um, and instead of having to get in when your sump gets plugged, you can back up your tractor, hook up the hydraulics, and it's going to spin those two tines and be able to bust that up. Um, if you've got the opportunity to go on and do an internet, internet search, look at the grain weevil. That's going to be a game changer as it comes out. It looks like a big drone. Uh, and on the end of it, it has like rotary knives and it goes up through the grain. And what it does is it busts up those clumps of grain before they get the chance to dive on the sump. Um, you know, so there's new technology that people are thinking and coming out with that are going to continue to make us safer. So I think you take a look at the education that we're working with, but you also take a look at the equipment and what the manufacturers have been doing to make it safer. I, I don't think it's one thing that's taking care of the, the issues and, and reducing those numbers. I think it's all of it. We're doing education earlier with these folks and making good habits. Yes, sir. And Mr. Massey, with your experience with AgriBility, I know that AgriBility is kind of a nationwide um, program that allows farmers to continue farming. So is there anything that kind of stuck out to you with the whole AgriBility? Well, I mean, it's just the, the, the biggest thing is, you know, farming is, is more than a job to most people. Um, it, it's a way of life and it's a lifestyle. And so if an accident incident happens, if, if someone's injured um, and it's a permanent injury, which I have been affected, you know, I have a, a student that graduated a number of years ago and he is faced with, a, you know, a lifetime injury. And, um, you know, you want to be there because that's their passion. Uh, agriculture is their passion. Being out on the land and being good stewards of the land is their passion. And I, I truly believe it's a way of life. A lot of people don't understand that, but you don't want to add another piece to that uh, that creates more stress. Um, allowing them to keep that passion and strong is what I think is critical to keep, you know, keep them going and, and keep them doing what they love. And so that's kind of my my draw to it. Um, I think it's neat to be able to get out there and help people in any way you can, obviously. And the, the real unique thing about the program, and again, we're relatively new here in South Carolina, but it's every situation is different. So every challenge is different. Uh, and I think that's a fun piece. And, a, a, you know, for us with students here on campus, we have the ability to do capstone senior design projects. So integrating them with some of that and maybe development of a new technology that may be beneficial to this one person well chances are that person isn't alone so we can share that information with the rest of the uh, rest of the country you know if, if it seems like it would be beneficial so i think just the idea of being able to help people stay and doing what their passion is is, is what really draws me there more than um, anything else 
Yes, sir. Thank you. And we're kind of cutting short on time here. So I would like to thank all of our special guests and our school staff here for joining us here today. And I'd also like to thank our viewers for tuning in to this week's of Carolina's Field, Forest and Water. And I'd also like to thank special thank you to our guests, Mr. Neenan and Mr. Massey. And I'd like to thank you all again and join us next week for another cons conversation here at John De La Howe. Carolina's Field, Forest, and Water, a closer look at agriculture in South Carolina and conversations between the current and future leaders of agriculture in the Palmetto State and experts from across America. Presented by the students of the South Carolina Governor's School for Agriculture at John De La Howe. For more information on the South Carolina Governor's School for Agriculture, visit our website at delahowe.sc.gov.